Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. The other day I asked over on Instagram what are some of your style dilemmas and questions which you'd like me to answer. I put together 10 questions for this video and they're all about how to maximize your wardrobe, how to style things in different ways, and basically just get the most out of the clothes that you already own. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I have everything timestamped down below so feel free to jump around throughout this video. The first question is being wondering how to style mini skirts and sweater dresses. So I don't own a sweater dress but I do have a mini skirt here that I'm going to style. Instead of wearing a mini skirt with something like a tight top and heels which I feel like is a very done up look I would instead pair it with really casual items. So I'm going to start with a very oversized light blue t-shirt and then from here I would add on oversized jackets. Whether that's an oversized blazer or a denim jacket, it instantly makes this outfit feel very relaxed and very similar to the kind of looks that I like to wear. The key to making pieces you're uncertain about work is to match it with pieces that you're already very confident in styling. For example, in my case, it would be an oversized blazer. I finished this look with some loafers. I feel like loafers are very classic. They're also a little bit more chunky, a little bit more masculine. And I like the contradiction between that and the very feminine skirt. A basic look to wear this skirt with would be a simple white shirt. And I just wanted to point out here that I would rather a shirt over a blouse for my style. Wearing it with a blouse like this makes it very girly with the big balloon sleeves and the broidery lace detail. Whereas wearing it with a shirt makes it feel more effortless and more classic. If I was feeling a little bit more girly one day, I can easily adapt this look to be more feminine. So for example, keeping the blue t-shirt, I would just swap out my loafers for a sandal. A sandal is a little bit less chunky and I feel like it instantly makes it look a lot more feminine. Something else I would wear is this blue top paired with the mini skirt. It has a very elegant neckline, it has a very vibrant color. And then when we pair it with some minimal accessories like the black bag and shoes, the outfit is feminine, but still relaxed. Question two is asking for business casual outfit ideas. And I'm gonna show you three type of outfits that I really gravitate towards. The first one is something like what I'm wearing right now. I'm wearing a navy merino knit, and I like that it's got some small details that make it feel a little bit more elevated. Little buttons, a little bit of texture, and then I just pair it with some tailored trousers. I usually like to go more casual on my top half, bit more formal on my bottom half because oftentimes I'm wearing a blazer as well. If you're not much of a trouser person and you prefer a skirt, this is the kind of thing I would go for. I personally prefer a more structured skirt because if you have a meeting at 5pm at the end of the day, I feel like these skirts look very polished whereas if you have a silk skirt, sometimes it can look quite wrinkled by the end of the day where this looks polished all day long. Another go-to outfit for me would be a one and done dress. This is a dress I have from End of a Stories and I feel like this is the perfect work dress. It is one of those pieces where you can put on and you don't have to accessorize either. It's already got the printed material, the little details. So you just put it on, put some shoes on, grab your bag and go. This one is also stretchy. So if I'm sitting down all day, I'm very comfortable without it being very restrictive and tight. I could throw a blazer on top of this and I feel like it looks very smart, very polished for any kind of work event, but definitely very good for business casual. Before I show you my final looks, I also wanted to point out this question. What's a proper teacher outfit without coming across as stiff or old fashioned? My best friend's a teacher and I used to be a tutor, so this is the kind of outfit I would wear. An outfit I would wear is this blue shirt paired with this beige trouser, and I will finish it off with something like a brown belt. This is an outfit that I think is both professional but also quite chic because of the proportions and because of the little details that are going on. Another similar combination will be this white blouse with these tan trousers. This top has the elevated neckline, which is a little bit different from your traditional white blouse. And then these pants have a bit of a faux press crease. It's got a stitching down the center, so you get that very sharp line. And that's a little detail that I really like. All of these pieces can very easily mix and match together. And all of them, I feel like, are modern, elevated basics. And that's the direction I would go if you wanted to look more modern but still appropriate for work. Question three is definitely my favorite question asked. So how do I redeem my basic fitted blazers to still look modern? And also how do we wear fitted blazers outside of school and work? I've got this one over here, which I'm going to style. I will style my fitted blazer with a pair of fluid trousers and then a chunkier sandal. The idea is that the trousers and the sandal are quite modern. So the blazer feels a little bit more relaxed. If I was to wear this blazer with more dressy pieces or pieces that are more fitted, I feel like it can easily look like workwear. 
So I would definitely style it with more casual pieces like the ones I am wearing. The next way I'll wear this blazer is more as a layering piece. I've been seeing those three-piece suits everywhere where you've got a tuxedo, where you've got the blazer and then a trouser. So I'm trying to replicate that with this blazer. I'll do up the button and then I'll throw an oversized coat or jacket on top. For example, I would do this brown coat. What I love about this outfit is that this piece is really, really functional. If I was to wear my oversized blazer, I don't think it would work because there's so much material it would start to feel a little bit too tight and uncomfortable. But because this blazer is fitted, because it's not as much material, it just goes underneath so well. It makes me warmer, but it also makes this outfit feel quite polished and quite chic. In a very subtle, loose way, I also feel like it mimics the tuxedo trend, where we've got an outerwear piece, we've got the inside piece and the tailored trouser, and it allows me to try that trend without necessarily buying a tuxedo. I would also layer this piece underneath some of my more casual jackets, whether that's a denim jacket or just one of those cotton oversized jackets. And I think it's just adding a little bit of the layered effect. And it's also practical because it's keeping me warmer. I also think the blazer goes so well underneath this jacket. This jacket is a little bit more statement, and sometimes I really want something more timeless to pair with it to balance it out a little bit. So pairing this blazer underneath the jacket I think makes this outfit feel more timeless and I feel like it's really chic to wear in this way. When the weather is a little bit cooler, instead of wearing a chunky knit inside a coat all the time, it's kind of fun to play around with different ways of layering and I feel like layering with the fitted blazer is super fun. For question four, we've got any ideas on dressing for humid summers without being too revealing. So the idea here is modest summer dressing. One of the easiest combinations I would do is a linen shirt and a midi skirt. For me, a linen shirt is an essential because it is so light and so cool to wear, even though it has sleeves. And then you can kind of easily adjust it. You can wear it full length. You can kind of roll it up a little bit so you show a little bit of arm, but it just becomes a very versatile key piece. I've just done up a few more buttons so we're not showing the midriff area but by combining a shirt with a midi skirt I feel like it's very modest and it's one of my favorite go-to looks. I would also definitely recommend a flowy pair of trousers. I've got my beige ones which I wear all the time but you can also do a silk one. I've got these grey silk trousers from Grana. They're actually a PJ pant, but I've seen a lot of variations for these that are meant to be worn going out. The idea is that both of these fabrics are incredibly lightweight and they're very loose, so everything is very comfortable here. I would recommend using your accessories to create a light summer look. So for example, a straw bag, strappy sandals. These are the things that I feel like really gives this outfit a very summery vibe. I feel like a lot of my summer outfits are actually quite modest because I just like the aesthetic. I've got this dress from A Piece Apart. It was a secondhand find on The Real Real. It's got long sleeves, it's quite a long dress, and because it's quite billowy, it's also very cool to wear. These two are even better because these are both linen. Linen is so lightweight, perfect for humid weather. This one's got sleeves and you can wear the sleeves down or you can wear them kind of rouge at the elbow. Both of these are very comfortable to wear and for modest dressing, I feel like it is possible to wear this and then use different accessories to change up the look from day to day. If I was to create a little capsule for modest summer dressing, I would do a few of these longer one colored dresses because you can accessorize these really easily. I would do one floral or one printed one for a bit of variety. I would do maybe two linen shirts and then a flowy trouser and a midi skirt. That would be my summer capsule and then I'll just mix and match those pieces for different looks. I would also definitely do some raffia kind of baskets and bags because that gives the summery look with just that one accessory. Question five definitely did make me laugh, but it's how to style oversized dresses without looking like a potato. And I definitely understand this idea. I feel like an oversized long dress, especially on someone petite, can be quite unflattering. But there are a few things that I like to look out for that I think makes an oversized dress a lot more flattering. And it always depends on your body shape, but I think this can apply to a lot of different shapes. So first up, I'm gonna show you these two dresses on the screen. And for me, both of these are quite wearable. What makes it wearable is that they're a little bit shorter than a full length. So you can see a little bit of ankle. And then the other thing is that they're also not a full length sleeve. So you can see a little bit of arm. And for me, that's really important. Even if it's just a little bit of wrist, it makes it so much more flattering than full length sleeves 
full length dress. On the other hand, we've also got these two dresses and I feel like they can be incredibly beautiful on the right person but I know that if I was to wear it, I would absolutely drown in that much fabric. The fact that they're very long, they've got long sleeves, it's very gathered through the bodice and then also on the skirt means that it's going to be so much harder to style because it's just more dramatic. So this is the type of dress that I would avoid when I'm looking for oversized dresses especially if you have a smaller frame. If you have an oversized dress in your wardrobe and you want to make it work, I'm going to show you on this dress how I would do that. This dress is a little bit longer than what I would prefer. So when it comes to the sleeves, I would ruch up the sleeve. I just have an elastic band on the inside that's basically holding the sleeve down and I'm creating a little bit of a puff sleeve with the elastic. So instantly, having this shorter sleeve, I think makes it more balanced. Usually with longer oversized dresses, I'm quite happy to not belt it. I don't think everything needs a belt, but because this is a little bit longer, you can't see much ankle or leg, I have decided to belt it. Belting a dress and then kind of pulling it up slightly around the waistline is one of the easiest ways to shorten the hemline slightly. And I think it's a very easy thing to do for some of your dresses. And I think by showing a little bit of arm, a little bit of ankle, it will always be a lot more flattering. The next question is going to uni, so not to overdress, but I also want to look cute. I feel like I have the winning answer for this question. I would recommend having a cute sweatpants and a cute sweatshirt. So the idea is that I'm going to wear all my nicer tops with my sweatpants, and I'm going to wear all my nicer bottoms with my sweatshirt. The idea is that whatever outfit you are wearing, you always have one sweatpant or sweatshirt on you, and that's the item that looks really relaxed, and you're able to wear some of the nicer pieces, but do so in a really relaxed way. Right now, I feel like there are so many cute styles of sweatpants and sweatshirts available, and I'll put up a few on the screen for you to look at, but I really feel like this is the formula to never be overdressed, always look effortless, but still be cute. And not to mention you'll be really comfortable in your sweats as well. I also recommend this way of dressing for anyone who has a more casual lifestyle because I find that I never feel overdressed, I always feel cute and it gives me opportunity to wear the clothes that I have. Question 7 is how to style a blouse without looking too formal. This is the blouse that I'll be styling. If your blouse is more formal than mine, I still think a lot of these ideas can apply. So one of the first things I would do is to add a crossbody bag because being hands-free and just the crossbody in general, I think looks a lot more relaxed than a handheld or a shoulder bag. So that's one of the first things I would do and it's easy because I gravitate towards a crossbody bag most of the time. And then I would do a sandal. My preferred sandal for dressing down an outfit is one of those Birkenstock style sandals. The ones that I'm wearing are actually from Ancient Greek Sandals and they just really dress down any outfit. Not to mention that they're very very comfortable. If you're not a fan of the chunky look, then just any sandal I think will do here in dressing the look down. For both of these looks, I've also folded up my blouse so it's more of a crop shape and this definitely makes it more casual. So depending on the style of blouse you have, you might need to tie it a little bit. You can just tuck it in or you can just fold it up like I have. And because of the shape of this blouse, it actually just kind of holds by itself. Something else I would do is just to throw something over my shoulders. I feel like when you wear something over your shoulder, it looks a lot more relaxed and a lot more cozy. This is one of my favorite tricks because in the transitional season, you're always carrying around a knit somewhere and you can kind of just wear it on your shoulders when you're not wearing the knit. The final thing is just adding a little bit of denim, which is quite obvious, but instead of wearing jeans all the time, which I feel like is a go-to, um, you can also do a vest on top of the outfit or a jacket. And then if it's quite cold where you are, you could do the trench outside the jacket, but just having a little bit of denim showing through somewhere in the outfit always makes it so much more casual. I used to rely heavily on adding denim through my jeans, but sometimes it's really nice to have the vest or the jacket just kind of peek through in a more subtle way as well. Question eight is how to know when something is too frumpy, too big versus cool, comfy and oversized. And then I'm also gonna combine this question with the next one. Clothes look messy and unpolished on me, but they look great on others. I'm gonna talk about some of the things that personally make me feel quite unpolished and maybe some of these will help you out as well. Starting from the top down, if I'm wearing a sweater and then I'm putting a jacket over the top, Sometimes the sweater will move to the side and it will sit somewhere here. If I also have on a few necklaces that are also tangled, this area just feels incredibly messy. It's one of my biggest pet peeves and it drives me insane. So usually if I'm wearing a top that has a looser neckline, I won't do too many necklaces. And if I know I'm going to layer, I'll usually reach for something that is a bit more fitted 
as opposed to something with a larger neckline. As we move down, I'm going to talk about the tuck because I feel like this can be really important in not looking frumpy. If you have something super thick, don't tuck the whole thing in. I would recommend tucking it back into your bra. So just doing a quick tuck like that. Or I recommend taking a belt and then kind of pulling it out over the belt. I have a video which I can link down below where I show some of these hacks. Something else you can do to make the tuck look neat throughout the day is to tuck it into a pair of shorts like this. I find that a pair of shorts like this really holds the tuck in place really tightly as opposed to it moving around all the time. The last key thing I want to mention is sleeve and hem lengths. I find that if you have a sleeve that you roll up a lot and you don't roll it in an intentional way, it can look a bit sloppy. Or if it's just way too long and dangling off, it can look sometimes a bit sloppy. This is also my biggest recommendation when it comes to oversized clothing. Make sure the pants and the sleeve length ends at the right place. And if not, you do one intentional clean kind of roll. Going back to the oversized question, I feel like if your entire outfit is oversized, sometimes it just feels like everything is too big. Whereas if you just choose one item to be oversized, it can often feel a lot more balanced proportionately. And then when it comes to things like a blazer, when you have a drop shoulder, for me, it looks a lot more natural and oversized. Whereas if you have shoulder pads and it's kind of sticking out beyond your shoulder, and then the sleeves are also long, when these things kind of combine, it starts to feel a little bit overwhelming for me and those are the little details that I would pay attention to. Question 9 is how to style the tibby crop blazer. I am long waisted so even with high waist pants the outfit looks odd. The question says odd which I'm guessing is referring to the fact that it creates a little bit of a gap in the middle between the pants and the blazer. I noticed recently a lot of styling kind of shows crop blazers and pants worn this way. So I'll put up a few photos on the screen but I completely understand that this is not the most wearable outfit and I personally definitely prefer that to be less of a gap in the middle. My recommendation to go around this is to go tonal. So I put on a navy knit on the inside that matches with the blazer. So even if there is a gap, it almost feels like a continuation of the blazer as opposed to like a very separate strip of color. If I was wearing a white top on the inside, I feel like it would be kind of weird just to have that white band across. But because it's navy, it just blends with the top seamlessly. If the gap still bothers you in this outfit, I would recommend doing tonal. So putting on navy trousers or a navy short or skirt. And by doing that, all the colors blend into each other and you're not creating a weird waist gap. Going to the other question about the faux leather crop blazer, I would style it with different trousers. I definitely prefer trousers over skirt and dresses when it comes to the blazer. And then I would choose fabrics that really contrast the leather. So I'll do a silk trouser or I will do a flowy trouser like this one that I'm wearing. Anything that isn't too rigid. A very rigid denim wouldn't be my first choice. And I probably also wouldn't do like a thick cotton. I feel like something fluid would look really nice with the leather material as a bit of a contrast. The final question also has basically two questions. But the first one is asking for airport flying outfits. And then the second one is how to wear leggings but still look stylish. Let's start with the plain look. And I'm going to start with the leggings because leggings for me are a bit of a staple when traveling. I live in Australia so I'm very far from most places that I usually go. So leggings are a must. And then planes are always cold. So I would definitely do an oversized, really warm knit or a sweatshirt on top. Something that is long enough to cover my butt, I feel like is very important here because I'm not about the crop top and then like leggings look. When it comes to my bags, I always have a little bag which holds my boarding pass, passport, hand sanitizer, a pen. And then the rest of my belongings obviously fit into my bigger tote bag. And then eventually this kind of goes into here. I often also have a jacket, so once I get to my destination, I'm ready to go. And then if it's cold on the plane, I'll also pull this out as a bit of a blanket. This is the same look I would give you if you asked me how I would wear tights casually. I would definitely wear it with a long line top or a long line knit. And then pair an oversized jacket on top of that, so it kind of covers everything at the back especially. For my own style, I would definitely avoid anything cropped and just go for long line pieces, whether that's a long line knit or a long line jacket. And to be honest, I don't wear tights a lot. I'm personally more of a sweatpant person if I wanted to go 
really casual and really comfortable. Those are all the 10 questions I'm answering for today. If there are any questions that you have for me, please leave them in the comments below and also follow me over on Instagram because I usually ask on Instagram a week before I film the video. If there was anything in this video that you would have styled differently, please let me know in the comments below and kind of bounce ideas off each other and just get more styling inspo. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next week. Bye.